this is Lexi Nieto, voice of Tomo Aizawa from Tomo-chan is a Girl, and you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one anime podcast. Welcome to Podcast Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. I'm your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. In today's PA episode, we are going to talk about Heavenly Delusion. A.K.A. Tengoku Yu Ova. Tengoku Dai Makyo. That's why I did not attempt the <laughs> Japanese name. How about that? I got a tongue twisted out in my head. Like, I got this. I'm going to come out of the gay smooth. <laughs> it just didn't go down like that. And then we just binge watched a lot because we just started watching it. And yeah. it is what, May 25th, 2023? You know, the interesting thing about that is that... um it, this is not really something that was on our radar because we initially, I think we heard about it from like A.H. Brandon's uh, mm-hmm. YouTube channel. He talked about how great the show was. And the thing that piqued my interest was that he mentioned it was just like w- w- very similar to um, Promise Neverland. Promise Neverland. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'm down for that. Because you love I that love one. that. I love the anime. I love season one and two, but the manga, ooh, man, that's, I need that box set. Anyways, so mm-hmm. I was really under the impression it would be like that. So that put it on my radar, but then mm-hmm. I remember trying to find it before, and I couldn't find it. And then when I did find it, it was, um, they said Disney Plus, and we had long gotten rid of Disney Plus. It's wrong. At that point, and I was like, Disney Plus would have this? Yeah, because as we were told, it's similar to Promised Neverland. Right. And there was violence, and it was gruesome. It involved, yeah, like it, it was described as the next Promised Neverland. and it, like, it was very dark from a child's perspective, too, and Disney Plus you know, it's related to children. <laughs> so yeah, like, like you, you wouldn't. I was like, I was like, that's so weird. And I was like, hey, no, hell no, I'm not spending money to, for one anime. No. Nah. Yeah, that was the other thing. The but, hang up was to pay extra just just to watch one anime. But you know what? Bringing it back, we kind of did that because we got high dive and we re- we added Disney Plus just to see that show. Yeah. But, and, and that was another one that popped on our radar months ago. And then we saw it was on high dive and we're like, nah, but okay. And I think there's a deeper conversation before we even get to talking about Heavenly Delusion. Uh, it's the fact that all these platforms mm-hmm. that are out, mm-hmm. it's very interesting how they're really good at like putting the one show you want to watch is not on Crunchyroll or Funimation. <laughs> on it and you're kind of like damn i don't want to spend money for that but then you're like but i really want to see this show <laughs> and so it's like yeah i call for up this money like this when and watching this one that one's already got me like man i want the ad free because every <laughs> time we get into the show then the ad pops up and i'm like really i just had this look like really and it's just it's, it's interesting you know how these platforms can just they, they're like yeah we'll lure you in with this no you need to you know you need to step up step up to the big boy club and not to be off topic oh but it's completely off topic animation country row we have the ad free plan yeah so it's like okay we have one that's ad free and this one has long ads mind you long (laughs) that you know what some of them are two minutes i think yeah because it's like i was i get i don't get annoyed when we get the commercials on like um Peacock. peacock because they're not that long and they're not that frequent correct but on this a minute and a half two minutes and it's like I'm just trying to get to the anime, and right when it gets to a good point, boom, commercial. I'm like, what? Heavenly Delusion was, oh my gosh, it was jerking us around. Every time when there was like a cliffhanger, 
a very tense moment. Yes. Like a change in the story right after before they unfold those scenes commercial. It's like, what? It's like, you don't yeah. give me commercial ad. <laughs> well, I mean, other thing too, when you look at anime, typically the episodes in full length is a 19 and a half minute episode and then sometimes 22 minutes if you get post credits and just think about that and think about realistically a 19 minute show Mm -hmm. with two minute commercials four times throughout that show it's annoying and then when it would come back because it would pull you in right and then when you're really invested, it it just pulled you out of it. It was the worst cock tease. <laughs> I swear. The blue balls was real. But yeah, I, I um I, we might have to step up to that pay plan. I mean that <laughs> that that extra the big boy plan, because I'm like mm. So Shit. that's how good Heavenly Delusion was for us. We went from watching episode one. And then getting pulled in, yeah. Then pulled out because of those commercials, which ads, which I didn't mind. And then we went all on the way. Point? Oh wait, I'll be like, oh come on! But it was kind of like bringing me back to the days when we were watching regular TV, and then the commercial would turn on. So I was like, oh, this is kind of nostalgic. You know, this generation wouldn't know anything about that though. <laughs> like we had to live through it, like. <laughs> And on top of that, we had to live through the whole week to week. Like, we didn't get seasons the way they do now. Like, oh, here's a whole season. What? <laughs> speaking, speaking of whole season. So, we don't have a whole season yet of Heavenly Delusion. But we binge watched the dub all the way up to, what, episode five? Yeah. yeah and then we're like... I don't mind this up. Yeah, let's just watch the rest and all the way to episode eight. It is because the show is just that good. It just really draws you in. And like, there's a lot of mystery. Like, when you saw the different scenes of the kids, you see the ones, like, the big group of kids in that facility. And the next moment, you see, like, a post-apocalyptic place with just two kids. And it's like, what's going on? Yeah. And this is when the outside outside was mentioned. Yeah. So th- this show does really well with like layering the plot Ooh. and leaving you asking more questions. Like you'll have one question in your mind about something and then it's just going to walk across in front of you and drop crumbs. And you're like, wait, now I'm thinking about this. Yeah. It's so good. And it's like, the show is really crafty at keeping you from really realizing how dark Mm-hmm. the the plot mm-hmm. is like the level of dark is on the scale i would say with promise neverland and the mystery and intrigue it build up similarly to that as well but it doesn't have the dark tone mm-hmm. at all because at mm-hmm. a moment's notice i'll pop in with some funny <laughs> funny ass comedy <laughs> that just has you yo you you'll be in stitches like it does that and it really makes you forget about the seriousness of it but yeah like i was just thrown off i was like man what what you know like <laughs> the t- the tone and it's and then like i said constant leaving you with questions and like when there's something that could potentially answer the question yes then some abrupt happens. So, <clears throat> I when I first saw the preview or like the trailer for this, I saw the trailer. I was intrigued by it, and maybe this is a spoiler. So, warning: this may be a spoiler. Mm-hmm. But you see a scene of like a facility with kids in uniforms, mm-hmm. and it's kind of focusing on one character, and then all of a sudden you see that character in a post-apocalyptic scene Mm -hmm. outside with longer hair you know and this was shown after they talk about outside and you're thinking that this is the same child but it seems like it's not because 
The one that's in the post-apocalyptic area is looking for someone that looks like him. So I'm not trying to like drop names or anything yet because I'm unsure if we're going to go that far. I kind of want to go that far. Mikhail, what you want to do? You want to go that far? You know, talk about some spoilers because there's some stuff. I want yeah, to talk about. I just no. Okay, so like talk about the latest episode. No, I mean we can, we can. I was just looking. I was like, I'm wondering if that theory is correct because I didn't really think about the characters looking so similarly, and then. <laughs> Yeah, that that kind of confirmed that. Um, yeah, we're dealing. Okay, go ahead. You, you start us off. I, I don't. You drive. Okay, so it seems like that they're not the same child, not the same person, because it looks like they're jumping between time periods, and then they kind of do some flashbacks talking or giving the some of the characters backstories and you see years like 2034 or something like that and then you start noticing the development of the man eaters the monsters mm -hmm. you see them in one area one scene where it looks like it's a future and then in the past they kind of like show you bits and pieces that's like the beginning of the man eaters or monsters so it's like oh wait wait what's going on here this is giving me some sci-fi movies where it's like oh he started an experiment and that experiment something went wrong and went rampage kind of like uh maybe like resident evil when you start studying that virus and then it just created zombies mm -hmm. yeah so from science to horror yeah but the tone never get never brings you to the weight of the situation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is really good because it it man. But oh my goodness! And uh, I'm and trying not I'm trying not to like jump straight into spoilers because it's like it, dissecting that last episode. Well, I also want to like just bring out some of the things that they review little by little mm -hmm. you're just like what and then the commercial <laughs> but anyways so freaking commercial free future it's maru he totally looks like this girl in the past named tokyo and for a while mikhail and i were wondering is tokyo a girl or a guy because they would refer to tokyo as a him and say kun which is usually with a boy and it was finally revealed yeah that tokyo's a girl and then i'm like oh my gosh what if maru is tokyo's child because i mean now that we're looking at the phantom right now with both tokyo and kona it it definitely we don't know we don't know we have no idea so we're just speculating <laughs> oh my god <laughs> but like it, it definitely looks like it it definitely looks like it <laughs> Um, but yeah, and that's the other thing. Okay, talking about the 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 time, you know, the two different time periods. Mm -hmm. It's the way the show is structured is half one time period, half the other. Mm -hmm. People realize that they're different time periods because when they go back and forth between the two, you don't realize how they connect. Yeah, and then there's some scenes in the future where someone says, somewhere out there, there is something. And then they jump to the facility with the kids in uniform. So you're thinking, oh, there's somewhere out there during the present time. Mm -hmm. But we're thinking, no, they have to be in different time periods because the progression of people, monsters, they're different. Yeah. They're in different stages. Yeah. Yeah, it... it um and like as the show goes on the the man eaters start to showcase more uh sentient human characteristics so then it's like before the show even answers you're wondering were these humans and the episode with the fish yeah with arms and it's like wait is it not the fish with arms that Kona drew and then you see the scene of Cuckoo climbing or like walking 
crawling on walls like she's got sticky hands and feet and the fish that had hands attacking Maru and Kiruko was, you know, crawling on the walls and windows. I was like, oh my gosh. And didn't Cuckoo get that picture? I was like, what? No, 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 no. This is this, this a coincidence? No, it can't be a coincidence. Like, what's going on? It really has me wondering, like, are uh, Kuruku and Maru, are they killing the cast that they're showing us? Is the pictures, like you're saying earlier, like the Kona's drawing, are they related? Are the ones, because every man eater is one of his drawings. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, is is it a case of, and, and mind you, we haven't read the manga at all. Nope. So it's like, a, is it a case of when they show who it's given to, that's the man eater for that episode. And are we watching them get killed off? So we're shown the two different time periods to like get... Because they're completely jarring to one another. Yeah, they are. Yeah, like you, you, you'll see, it and you're like, "Where? How does this connect?" So, are they doing that to like get us? We get connected to like Maru and uh, Kuroko in the one, mm -hmm. and then in the other, we're getting connected to Shiro, Kuku, Tokyo, Kona, uh, Mimihime, and all them. And it was just revealed that, oh, you've been watching them get killed. Ooh. Like, it, it's like, I think it's going that way. And like, man, that's messed up. I was speculating who each man eater was. Mm. But now that you mention it, Kona supposedly gave all his art to Tokyo because they made a promise. Mm -hmm. And when Kuku got a picture, Tokyo was actually mad. So it's sort of like, is it really who got a picture? Or is it more like they're all being turned randomly? Yeah. And then now I'm thinking about, okay, who else was kind of close to that group? What about that guy who could jump off from like three floors or try to climb up that pillar with the machines? Like, mm -hmm. what about him? Was he one of the man eaters? Is he gone already? Well, and that's the thing that's interesting is like going into how the show just slowly reveals itself. Like it, it's not one of those shows that just throws out all the information. I like hear, you know, this is what's going on, but this is where the plot's going. This one is like slowly like trickle feeding out the plot. So mm -hmm. like when it was showcasing the kids at first, you would have no idea that something was different about the kids. Now, when they showed you the kids where they were, you basically got the same impression as like the kids from Promise Neverland. Like, mm -hmm. You know, You're there's being nurtured. Right. You know, you were thinking something along those lines. But then you start slowly seeing the kids do things that they shouldn't be naturally capable of doing yeah and like they showed the one guy jumped off the thing and he landed and he threw it like his coordination with the ball was good not only that remember the scene i was talking about where he tried to go up the pillar with the machines yeah he fell, he fell and got up yeah like nothing He's yeah like, well he was more like ow but that's it he could stand up nothing broke like he should have died right and then it showed us cuckoo twice when she won, I think she jumped up and she grabbed the tree. Grabbing from the bottom of a branch. And I was like, how is she holding herself up? Right? <laughs> and it's like, and then the next time they show that where she like just climbed up the wall, you're mm -hmm. like, yo, something's going on here. And then as you're asking the question, like, wait, how is Tokyo going to get up that wall? Then Tokyo <laughs> asks that question because it's like, it's like the story's right there with you as it's unfolding mm -hmm. and watching it from your perspective. So it's like, it was really brilliant in how they, they did that. And that scene was good because you get freaked out by Cuckoo's crawling on the wall and then you get the humor of Tokyo unable to get up the wall. Yeah. 
like Mikhail says, it pulls you in, gives you a mystery, a little bit of creepiness and horror, and then all of a sudden humor. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Like, uh, okay, here, here, here's an example. Like when uh, Maru confesses his love to Kuroko and then tries to like, <laughs> tries to like make out with Kuroko. Uh, he's like, stop. I'm a dude. Just he's like, look, I'm gonna explain this to you. I'm a dude in a woman's body, and then like, <laughs> like it keeps going with like Maru trying to like be like super affectionate and all this other stuff, and he, and he's like, no, dude, I'm I'm legit a dude, and you're like, wait, what? And then the next episode, like they're explaining, <laughs> bro, that wasn't even the funny part. So Maru was oh, sorry. I so Maru was trying to, you know, do that romantic, impulsive kiss. And Kiruko says, forcing is bad. <laughs> oh, man. Like, it, it's like there's like another situation where they run into like this, uh, the girl that runs the ends. And, um, and then like there's a scene where like Maru and like the girls trying to sleep with Maru. And then, like, Kuroko walks in, and it's, like, the position where he's doing doggy style with the, yeah, the she girl. Was naked, she, she was naked. And for some reason, his pants were down. And, and it looked like he was, he went in. Yeah. And then, like, Kuroko is like, what went where? <laughs> Like, yo, we're in this serious situation and this happens. And, like, there's, like, so much misunderstanding. Mother is like, oh, my God. Well, this is the girl I just confessed to. Just caught me doing this, but I wasn't trying to. It's, like, a total misunderstanding. <laughs> but how can I talk my way out of this? Like... It was like cannot win argument. <laughs> no, it, it was funny. Is like what led into that was another similar situation where like Maru ended up helping saving uh, Kuroku, and then it, it, like his reward is he wanted to be able to like it, uh, Kiruko, Kiruko offered, offered Maru to touch her boobs, and then <laughs> in the scene after that they were back at the end. Then they were like, like Maru was like, no, he's like, I want to touch your boot. And it, it, it like made the whole scene and situation like all super serious. Right, like he was like, remember the promise. Like he was just going to take it however, and you can interpret that how you want. <laughs> and then the end comes in is like pointing at the signs, like keeping the futons clean. Yeah. And then no, that's. Whatever, and then pulls him in the other room, which leads to that whole situation where, like, he got uh, Ogimaru got to touch the boob, it just wasn't Kuroko. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because, like, he was so against touching uh, the owner of the inn's yeah. breast, and as soon as he touched her breast, he was like, Oh my gosh, I've always wanted this, and yeah. <laughs> he was like, such a teenage boy like and that was like kind of endearing to watch because they're going through this dire situation it's like he's a teenager and for some reason he has these great athletic abilities and on the other side he's mentally and emotionally where he should be yeah a teenager yeah and you know like it, it goes on to show there's an organization that's doing all these experiments Mm -hmm. And like you start to find out that the children that are in um, where they are, and I don't know if they've actually stated where they are. I'm just going to say we can say like heavenly and delusional. And it just kind of makes sense because of the two paradigms between the two time periods. Mm -hmm. But the kids, you start to see that they're not quite what they should be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you, then you start piecing together their experiments because that's where you find out, like, the man-eaters, where they started from. Yeah, because you know? we were thinking that the kids were 
failed experiments who eventually right. became man eaters. And then we were wondering, oh, were the man eaters other failed experiments, but not these kids? And then there's like a whole thing of why the experiments are being done to begin with, because mm-hmm. there's like the the end of uh the lady said there was some event that's supposed to happen. Day of fate? The day of fate. Like that's supposed to happen. And the uh kids or the experiments are supposed to prevent that because you find out they're immune to all diseases Mm -hmm. then they get that disease which turns them right so to kind of explain what we're thinking of is i think the first episode it was called heaven and hell yeah there's a scene where is it tokyo asked a director What's the outside like? And she said, it's like hell. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, okay, inside is heaven, outside is hell. And then you're thinking, okay, there's something going on out there. And this facility is like a shelter. And they are nurturing these children to be the next generation of salvation. That's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. But then it slowly shows like, oh, wait, those monsters that we see, you guys got like baby versions of those. Are you the source of those monsters, man eaters? What? So I was like, okay, what's going on? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just what? And then when there's a scene with Maru, he was reading this newspaper and he was talking about, yeah, uh, people are afraid of robots, AIs, because they relied on, on them in the past, but something happened. There's paranoia. And when you're at the facility with the kids, you notice there's a lot of robots, AIs. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't notice how much there were because it's like you, you were shown little by little, you know, tools, things that are helpful, resourceful. Then you find out that they're a teacher. They're kind of maintaining the building. Wait, what? It is the building? It's like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And then that one robot that looks pregnant. Yeah. Like, it is super trippy. And then you're noticing in this facility that the security cameras, one moment you see the kids, another moment you're not. So it's kind of like, oh, wait, is this robot helping the kids being sneaky? Or is someone manipulating the cameras? Like, we don't know. Yeah. But it showed it to us. And then we kind of forgot about it. (laughs) Yeah. It, it, and then I'm kind of curious about how, like, the whole situation in Kuroko and, like, the brother being in the sister's body. That's another thing! Because, like, yeah, when they did a flashback, which was all of, like, almost three episodes, like, they showed, ba- you know, him with his sister, and then they showed he was, like, a marksman. And then that's mm-hmm. what you, because like you haven't put together that he is the younger brother, and then he bec- he gets in the sister's body. You don't put that together, but then nope. when they start showing he's a marksman, then you're like, wait, Kuroko's a marksman, and, mm-hmm. and Maru even points that out. Mm-hmm. And so like you eventually go on to see like he tries to go up against a man eater, and then eventually he gets uh, half eaten. The sister pulls him out. He's in his dire state, and then there's this insane. It was insanely like wild, and then they show like the you know the doctor does a procedure, mm-hmm. and then next thing you know, you see him wake up. He's in the hospital, and he's in his sister's body, mm-hmm. and it's like what happened. Then you see his stitches around his head. It's like did they remove the the brain? Mm-hmm. And, and you know, it's just you got questions. <laughs> Even before that, we got questions because that scene where Maru confesses, but Kiruko is saying, I'm a boy in a girl's body. And the scene before that, this guy talks to Kiruko saying, oh, I remember you. Too bad about that incident with your brother. So oh, when, when, man, I forgot about that. Yeah. Kiruko says, I'm a boy in a girl's body. I was thinking, incident, crazy stuff going on. Oh my gosh, is the brother's brain, mind, soul, whatever, inside of Kiruko's body, her body, the sister's body? And I was like, whoa. And they were like, wondering, but how? 
like how would this happen? And I was thinking maybe like Maru's ability. You now he can get his hand, put it through the man eaters, and like crush the soul. Well, that was organ, the other thing when they whatever started... it was. I'm like, okay, what if somehow the siblings fuse? I don't know. And then they revealed that it was like a manual surgical procedure, and it was really graphic. Like being able to like see. Like him start like when you started seeing him able to do that kind of stuff, that's when you started realizing, yo, this story is actually very, very different. Mm -hmm. Um, and then actually, Maru kind of ties into like the whole thing before with uh, the the director or the president, whatever that lady in the wheelchair was, in um, in heavenly, mm -hmm. you know, um she was looking for a way to cure the disease and they had to find and create a method. Mm -hmm. And then you see, he's able to really dive into them and, you know, kill them or cut out. Cause mm -hmm. it's like you said, it's a surgical thing. He does. Mm -hmm. um, what he call it? Something dive. Fatal. Fatal dive. <laughs> and before Kyoko wanted to call it the model touch, <laughs> I kind of like model touch better, <laughs> right? So, like, you know, it made me think because this episode where you see Cuckoo going like uh, with uh, Tokyo into uh, find an incubator room with the man eaters, and I was mm -hmm. like, wait, what if Maru was that thing that was in the incubator thing? Oh, I didn't think about that. Right? Like, isn't it crazy? Like the different angles you can look at the mm -hmm. stuff that goes on in this show. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if he was then. Because what if, kind of like in Trigon, where there's the, what is it called? The one that's like a plant, the plant, mm -hmm. where it kind of connected with Bash's mom. And then Vash and Knives were born with human features. Mm -hmm. So what if the man eater kind of had like a little connection with Tokyo and then became like Tokyo? You know? True. But Maybe. I got I got another theory that Ooh. might blow your mind. Theory? Okay. What if what if Maru was that man who was in the incubator? Mm -hmm. but also, remember there was the lady that he looked up to mm -hmm. that Kuroko told what well, was told to like by her to look after Maru. Right. What if that was Cuckoo? But we thought Cuckoo was a fish with hands. I'm just throwing another theory. Oh. What was her name? Oh my gosh. I don't name? remember. Oh no. That was a thing. But I'm like, there, there's just so many different ways that you can look at it. Um, There's something else too. Um, Come on, show me the names. I think it's after the M. I, uh, I... Oh, this is gonna bother me. I know, right? <laughs> Why did you do that? I do, I I was like, got okay. her, got her, I got her. Yeah, okay. So Makura, Makura Manaka. Okay, I just I was just thinking. I I don't think I'm gonna look away because I don't want to get spoiled. Because we're looking at mm -hmm. the wiki in case y'all are wondering. Mm -hmm. I it just I don't it. Okay, I'm I'm gonna say it. This has been a great season for anime. I can I I can see that Mikura is cuckoo. I can see that. I mean there's the cool in there. And the reason why I'm kinda leaning towards this is because in episode eight we saw these this couple here and one of them kinda reminded me of Shido. Uh -huh. An older man. Who's a doctor who is really tech savvy and was using a tablet 
as a form of communication with someone. And what did he always have with him in that facility? A tablet. And he was surrounded by machines. Mm. But mm. And, and that was him. That was him. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, mm -hmm. so I can see <laughs> that Mikura was cuckoo. Yeah. Yeah, and we haven't even talked about the the gun. Denise, yes. like, like, yo, we've been on this for like, oh, like almost forty minutes, and like, we haven't even talked about the gun that needs a battery <laughs> and only has so many shots, and it's able to to wound the man eaters and kill. It's a laser beam, a teeny weeny gun. Yeah, it's a laser beam, and it's powered by a rechargeable battery. <laughs> okay, so here's the other thing. I just it popped in my head. So one of the ways we can debunk the all the man eaters being one of the the kids mm. is remember the lady that ran the inn had a son who became one of those. Well, it was absorbed by one. And yeah. the mom thought that the man eater was kind of, what's it called, channeling her son. Yeah. And such. And I was, I was believing it too, because it didn't kill her. And then it just straight up just kills her like, boom. Yo, it used like this wire like thing and just sliced her up. And I was anticipating that scene too. I was like, <laughs> oh, she's going to die. She's going to die. I don't know when. But I was like on my toes and I was thinking, dang, why is it going to happen? There's been so many opportunities. <laughs> Man, it held you in anticipation. Yeah. And then, and then like once it hit, you're like, whoa. Like that though, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it's it's crazy how this show like it will give it, it doesn't put you like I said in the full gravity of how dire their their reality is, but it allows you to have a sense that this is a serious scene, and then take the edge off with humor oh, or yes. making you have a feel good moment. And then after it does that, some died. Like when they killed off the lady, mm -hmm. I was like, I wasn't ready for that. And then the next scene, Kiriko takes back the batteries that she gave her. Yeah. And I was like, wait, isn't this the batteries that you gave? And she's like, ah! <laughs> like what? Yeah, that was crazy. We didn't even talk about the girl that, um, that showed up like a ghost that was bald looking alien like oh what was her name asuka yeah yeah so in that one we heard about asuka and she uh you know took her life she was close to kona and then tokyo for some reason she was ill and she saw like a like a hallucination of her and the crazy thing, the way they built it was you saw that moment where she took her life. But, you know, it has that typical scene where you just see the body hanging. You don't really see the head. And you're thinking, okay, this is because it's kind of graphic, you know. And so when you see the hallucination vision from Tokyo, you see the head. And it looks like an alien. Yeah. And it's like, is that how she looked? And because, like, I don't think they showed her face. I'm like, Oh, well, this is a punch to your... <laughs> I know, right? Like, okay, so I'm, I'm going to ask you, do you feel this way as well? Like, do you feel like you want to go back and rewatch the show to see what we missed? Oh, definitely, because there's so many small <laughs> details. Like, for example, that episode that we're talking about where the mom believed that the man-eater was her son... Uh, the reason why I remembered that the sun was actually absorbed was because Kiriko says, I've been absorbed by a man eater too. So I know what it's, it's like. And when they do the flashback of Kiriko as the little brother and the sister, the little brother gets absorbed. Yeah. So it's like, yo. Yeah. They just throw you something in the beginning, something small. And then later on, they show it to you. Not tell, they show. Yeah. Yeah, they So you have to connect it yourself. It's not like it's telling you, oh, here's point A, point B, here's the connection line. No, it does not do that. No, no, it doesn't. I mean, we still don't know 
that scene where like after we realized that the little brother got the sister's body, we don't know if he was playing with himself. Oh, because that was a that was a scene that was like I got comfort in my sister's body, and then they just show, and it's like up to you to interpret it. Yeah, like, like when when they said that, comfort. like when he said that, you're like, okay, this is one of them off color like goofy comments, and then they show that, and you're like, what? Mm, make you think, make you speculate, <laughs> but it won't tell you. Yeah, it it was um. There's just so yeah. many scenes like that throughout the show. Like when you see the girls kiss, when you see, and they uh, even bring that up. Like they've never been shown that. How do they know about that? Yeah, it's like, oh my goodness! Like, what's going on here? How do we get here? And like, you you kind of want to know, but you kind of don't want to know. <laughs> It's like, I'll let the show decide. Yeah. So this these little things that they show you, it shows so many facets of this story, this anime, because there's all kinds of stuff going on. Yeah. It is definitely it's like, man, if you haven't um if you haven't watched Heavenly Delusion, and I'll say that I I think I even said it to you, like, I don't see really outside of A.H. Brandon. And I think maybe Glass Reflect Reflection brought that up. I don't see anyone else really talking I about it. He wrote it off. Yeah, I think he did. Well, he, he everything we've been enjoying, he's been writing off. No shot at him. It's just something we noticed. Um, but yeah, no one's really talking about it. Because when you really listen to people talk about anime, it's typically whatever is the big trending thing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know? So, like, when you talk about other stuff outside of, you know, the mainstream anime, people are usually drawing up blanks. Like, how many people actually know about Blue Lock, right? <laughs> or how many people know about uh, Oshinoko or this show or, like you know lifeline or any of these other shows that are really really good or skipping loafer which i think a lot of people are sleeping on oh yeah so like i just didn't know anyone talking about this and this is i'm blown away with how great this show is i know because there's we are guilty of not watching stuff because it gets overhyped we are guilty yeah. of that but if there's people praising something and giving us really good details of why it's so good, we will watch it. Yeah. You know? It's like it's not like we're purposely missing opportunities just because we're stubborn. No. <laughs> yeah. Like if we want to watch something good, we want to, okay. Yeah. It is yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, um, it... <sighs> You don't want to take the glass reflection approach to watch one episode or two episodes and write it off. Yeah. Because a show like this, the first episode, you had no idea what was going on. Yeah, we were lost for a couple episodes. Right. And it's because it's slowly peeling back the layers of the onion. Mm -hmm. And if you don't stick with it, you're going to miss out on something really good. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the approach of, you know if people are talking too much about it, you're not going to watch it or people are not talking about it at all. You don't watch it, which sometimes we're guilty of falling guilty to that too. But in this case, the best approach is really just to like, you know, take it like an hour or two of your, your day and just start watching a show. Like if it, if the description seems interesting, give it a, you know, give it a watch, Mm -hmm. you know? And, um, we're finding a lot of stuff that we're really liking, especially on High Dive. Yeah. High Dive has some really good stuff. And another way that we're finding out we're liking things is also watching it in dub. Yeah. Like, we have found that a lot of comedy shows turn out being really good to us because we are understanding the humor when we couldn't in sub. I got you, girl. I got you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> that's from girlfriend girlfriend uh if y'all didn't catch that reference but yeah it it's just it's so much good stuff and it's just crazy when you really look at like how spread all over the place like good anime is now i mean before it was just if you want to get your anime fix it was crunchyroll funimation and netflix and then hulu came into the mix which is the only place right now you can catch gintama and dub which is where I've been watching it lately, but I'm so annoyed with these freaking commercials. <laughs> Anyways, but you know, it used to be, like I said, Crunchyroll, 
Funimation, Netflix, and then you got Hulu. That's where you're getting your anime. Mm -hmm. Then you started getting stuff on Retro Crush. Then you got stuff on, you know, High Dive. Like, Mm -hmm. there's so many platforms popping up now. There's even anime on uh, HBO Max. It's exclusive over there. Oh, and um, Amazon. Yeah, and, and Amazon as well. And it's like, before, when you wanted streaming services, when they were saying cut the cord... You were cutting the cord <laughs> and only spending no more than maybe 20 bucks a month on a couple of different streaming services. Now, if you want to be able to watch everything, because let's be honest, trying to watch cable in 2023, mm. who's doing that other than like, I mean, if you want it's coming with your home, right? You know, which since we moved here, we this is the most cable we've ever watched. Yeah. Before. Yeah. But like. You know, no one's watching cable TV because we want to be able to pick and choose what we want to watch when we want to watch it. When we want to watch it. Oh, we've been spoiled. We've really been spoiled. So, like, you know, now that every every one of these companies is realizing that the ones especially sitting on, like, generations of film and TV shows, like, hey, you know, we can just put out a subscription and the guarantee getting money from people constantly yeah. since every platform has picked up on that if you want to catch everything you're spending over a hundred bucks a month yeah and that's because you ain't trying to get ads but <laughs> you know you know but you you about to spend money to be able to watch all this stuff and it's like it adds up now yeah it is i mean they're already putting out uh videos infomercials commercials ads about bundling or saving money on these uh subscription platforms you saw the one from peacock no well, okay so peacock's like yo you can get us for a year for j- just pay 20 dollars right now you got us for the whole year and i was actually going to talk to you about that i was like plus it's ad free oh. i was going you know that ad free though <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> I like pay one and done. I know. But you know, like I I was like, man, they know how to get you. Yeah. Because that you look at that that money you save it and then you don't realize that the next year you're not gonna be paying that. You're gonna be paying double to triple that fool. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's how they work. They, like, give you the bait, and they, they hook you, and you're like, ah, eh, I'm hooked already. <laughs> that's why it's, like, it's crazy, like, when uh, my mom talks about how there's nothing on cable. I'm like, who's watching cable? Mm-hmm. How can you deal with that? Even when we watch, like, stuff on cable, which is, I think, only wrestling at this point. Yeah. It's annoying when we have to sit through the commercials. I'm like, y'all can just go to YouTube and watch WWE Best who uploads mm-hmm. this show and like by the time I'm done with one clip the next clip is up so I can follow along with the show and like yeah it's, cable is dying it's yeah dying. but it's still available you know cause it's sort of like a fallback or like a plan B C D kind of thing right yeah so I don't hate it. I'm glad it's still around just in case. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah, who's really watching it though? But all that being said, streaming platforms are great. Uh, A lot of great shows are coming to various platforms. But then, okay, I'm going to add to that. Oh, so these, yeah, we're we're, we're doing a dish right now. So like when these these shows come to these various platforms, Mm -hmm. like I said, like, having one show that draws you in like Oceanoko for a high dive or, you know, heavenly delusion for Disney bless and Hulu. It's a gateway because they get you in to start watching other stuff. Oh yeah. Like you kind of get curious. You're like, what else they got? And like, Ooh, they have this and that. Oh, wow. He's just, you know, and Disney, the worst offender, because like you get Disney plus just to watch, you know, Heavenly Delusion, and then you're like, yo, I got the Disney Kingdom here to watch. Mm-hmm. You got the movies. Yeah. You have children. You got Disney Junior. I mean, especially if you're like our age and you're seeing stuff that we grew up with in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Like from Spider-Man to like Quack Pack, DuckTales, Rescue Rangers, Gargoyles, mm-hmm. Darkwing Duck. You over here like, 
Then, not only that, I saw Pepper Ann. Pepper Ann! I was over here, like, checking out some Pepper Ann, and I'm like, yo, Disney got me. You saw Recess, too? I love to watch Recess. I saw Recess. I saw Doug. <laughs> like, I'm over here like, man, it's so crazy. Could you, could you imagine back in the 90s or early 2000s, or even in the 2010s, where you could now watch everything you saw on TV whenever you wanted? I, it's just mind-blowing. I used to go to the network's website, and they said, oh, you can watch all these episodes. Just enter your cable credentials and it'll connect. Oh, my goodness. Is that for everyone? Yeah. Especially for MTV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just crazy. Like, we used to have to. If we, even that, like, if you wanted to really watch a show, you had to have a VCR back in the day. Oh, that too. And, and some blank tapes. To be able to record the show because like it, it once you saw it the first airing it wasn't coming back on unless it went to syndication i remember i had to go to swimming class when i was little and this is when car captures was being aired and car captures aired during my swimming class and i would record it <laughs> so i could catch it and watch it and one day it didn't record. I was so sad. And I was thinking, I don't think I'll ever get that episode. I don't know if they're going to do reruns. <laughs> I mean, because yeah, sometimes they would sometimes. And like, if you like Dragon Ball, if you like Dragon Ball back in the 90s, um, they re-showed all the way up to the Namek arc. No, to to um, to Frieza. Yep. So yep. like right before Goku went Super Saiyan and it was just rebooted Looping and you being those reruns and you you know you didn't know any better because back then you know i know this is completely unrelated to heavenly delusion but we <laughs> on this roll but like you know back then we were just happy to have cartoons yep because you back then you barely had cartoons on or they only came on at certain times they came on at five o'clock in the morning to and they would go all the way up until right when school started, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then when you got home, they'd pick back up then, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then go to like six thirty, seven thirty at night, and then all you had is like Nick at Night, or if you had cable, mm -hmm. or like all the adult shows came on. So mm -hmm. you know, we were just happy. Well, we didn't care about continuity. We were just caring. We got cartoons to watch. Yep, that's and it's so true. Like now, it's like no. I want to watch this and I want it to make sense. And I. <laughs> you remember watching an episode and you're like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see what happens next week. And you watch it and it turns out to be the first episode. And you're like, what, what happened? Why happened to the next episode? What's going on? I need to know what happened. Yo. That was before they had information on the internet. So you couldn't look it up. No, because you'd have to go and get the, the Sunday paper to get the TV copy. Yeah, and you're like, oh my gosh, is it going to air again? When is it going to air again? Oh my gosh, what's going on? Oh my god, yo, I was like, there's so many shows I would be really invested in, like Samurai Pizza Cats, Sailor Moon, Mega Man. I think Sailor Moon was notorious for that. It was. It really was. And I was like, oh my god. really into it. And the next thing I know, it's like either dip, it's not on. You're like, what happened? Because like, what you would never know when a show would like change networks change or just stop, stop because Get canceled. There was there was no way. Like, it's not like now where something goes on with production. You got people on Twitter and on blogs. And yeah, they, they're there with the quickness, wanting to smoke. Like, but <laughs> back then. Like, they just will just cold turkey you from your show, just cut you off. Yeah. And you're over here like, man, I really dug that show. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what's going to, like, you just had, <laughs> you had no idea. Tenchi Muyo. Oh, my God. Tenchi Muyo. It like, different uh, series. So you're like, wait, what happened here? Uh, what? And yeah, you didn't like, know there were seasons. You didn't know there were alternate universe. <laughs> right? And it's like you would be really invested in one, and then you go to the next one, and you're like, wait, that don't follow up with what I just saw. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Man. 
man yeah okay yeah we completely derailed we did we're so sorry yet not sorry <laughs> oh man yeah so this uh this show heavenly delusion if you haven't watched it you should definitely check it out um it is really really good so good it, it loves to leave you on a cliffhanger at the end of the episode mm -hmm. constantly gives you something to ask questions about and it's like you get hooked mm -hmm. you get that first hit and you're like damn i need more of a bump no yeah. experience with that but <laughs> i'm just saying it hooks you in like a drug and it just keeps you going and now I'm over here like, I want to just go read the manga. I know, right? Especially with the ending of episode eight. Right? Where we had a realization, oh my gosh, these were people that we saw in the past. And it's like, it, was, it wasn't it was like a bad cliffhanger. It was sort of like a kind of giving you hope there's more. Yeah. Like, it felt like another arc was starting. Mm-hmm. Like an arc was ending and another arc was starting. So I'm like, ooh, okay. I can't wait. Yeah. I'm patient, but I am anticipating again, but in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Patient yeah. anticipation. <laughs> yeah. So it's um I think screw it. I'm just gonna read the mod. That's the other thing too. Like we're really at this point now where it's like Yo, pick up the manga, pick up your iPad, your phone, whatever. Just, you know, go to your local bookstore, get it off Amazon. Like, just start reading manga. I really want to end this on, like, the importance of it. Because if you can sit and watch the anime and you love the show and the characters, mm -hmm. you should still be able to love and enjoy those same characters coming from their source material. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, you know, if you've got a voice in your head for what the character is supposed to sound like because of the dub, you know. Or the sub. Or the sub. You want to hear it. Yeah. Then just picture, you know, hearing that when you're reading the, the chapters because you may think the show's episodes gives you me. You get a feast Ooh. when you start, like, reading the manga. And it's just, I can't highly recommend it enough. Like, it's just one of my favorite things and I'm someone who, back in the day, like, when we were dipping our toes into, like, exploring the World Wide Web, that's what <laughs> WWW means for y'all youngins that don't know, I used to read the manga in pure text format. Oh. With, like, you know, that was before we had scanlations mm -hmm. really being a common thing. I used to read that. And that's how I read through Rurouni Kenshin. What? And I read through that and had to picture everything in my mind as to how it's playing out based off of what I saw in the anime because... Thank you, anime. Thank you know, you. the anime was good. I got through season one to the end of season two. And then we didn't have cable anymore. Mm. And, you know, right before we didn't have cable, it cycled back to the first episode. Oh. And I didn't know. And I was like, I want to know what happens next. And so I ventured off into finding, you know, the manga translated into text. And that's how I continued the story. But because I had the idea of the characters, mannerisms, you know, the voices, I was able to visually paint out, like, how that was. Nice. So, like, regardless of how you ingest manga, you know, comics, whatever, read. Because it's just the greatest way to experience this is like through your own imagination and just let the story take you on a ride she can't stop reading manga i can't stop <laughs> and it's just one of those things and there are stories that are so good that never get adaptations mm -hmm. and you're robbing yourself of great stories if you just are an anime only person and i know there's an anime versus a manga beef screw it enjoy it all Ingest it all, partake in it all. So for sure, amen. I want a little sermon there. <laughs> you did, <laughs> Father Mikel. Praise in the manga. Hallelujah. <laughs> if you guys are enjoying this, please leave us a comment. 
in whatever platform you're listening or watching podcasts across the world. And let us know other animes or mangas that you guys would recommend that you feel like are being looked over yeah. and not being appreciated enough. We love to read and listen to good content. Yeah, yeah. So uh, with that being said, we're going to be signing out on this episode of Podcast Across Worlds. If uh, you enjoyed it, regardless of whatever platform you take it in on, if you're watching video format on YouTube or Spotify, then, you know, leave a comment. Let us know how you enjoyed it, where we could improve, what you thought was excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, share it around with someone else that you think will get some benefit out of it. If you're listening to it, you can catch the podcast on every major podcast outlet from Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora Radio, as well as Amazon Music. And um, also YouTube Music, because YouTube podcasts have now going into YouTube Music. So that's another way. Hey, you want to start a podcast where YouTube got you covered? I mean, even Spotify got you covered. But, um, you know, just uh, let us know. And we we enjoy your guys' feedback, interact with the polls and the mm -hmm. put up and mm -hmm. you know, um we'll tell y'all where we can find you. So where where can they find you? You can find me on almost all social media platforms at Lehua Superfina. Yep. And you can find me on all platforms as well, Miguel Casanova across the board. I'm there wherever. Uh I may or may not respond just because, hey, I'm busy and I usually got that little one with me. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, I, I do check in with every, you know, message or whatnot. whatnot. So uh, if I don't get to you immediately, I get to you eventually. <laughs> but uh, that being said, this has been a great episode. I know we went on a tangent completely off topic, but I had fun. Me too. Had like, fun. Let us know what you guys thought. Yeah. <laughs> so keep reading manga. Keep watching anime and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you guys on the next one. Ah, hui ho. Thank you for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casnova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on the show, then make sure you do us a solid by, if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Superpina, then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then Make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.